when you look at any position group and you're talking about is the position group getting better in my opinion look at the quality of play you're going to be getting from the starters okay compared to years past good start and the depth at that position compared gotcha. to years past and the first metric of, of those two in terms of the level of play from the starters i think michigan state will be better than it has been the past few years not drastically better a lot of the same guys especially left guard and center uh right tackle shouldn't be too much of a jump up black stock yeah. we'll see um right guard is a battle so i don't know if the starter level play will be drastically better but it will be better the depth the depth talk to me astronomically improved from where it was just a few years just from last year um it's been well documented coach cap has talked about it um everyone's really talked about it last year at this time they had not enough guys to have a full offensive you had four scholarship offensive linemen by the spring game that's a problem and yeah. then now you look at this year you have there they didn't put a number on it since they have more than enough but the way I look at it is you have probably two full shifts of offensive line, at least, of just scholarship guys, if not more. Um, the reason for having such better depth and at least equal, if not better, starting play from the offensive line is continuity, mm -hmm. lack of attrition, which I guess yep. go hand in hand. Guys are not leaving because you're not missing on them. Sure. And to that point, a high hit rate in recruiting. So if you're landing guys, you're identifying the right guys, you're getting them on campus, you're developing them to the point where they are staying and are, are not, I guess, flailing out. That is how you get to this point. You have guys like Stanton Rammel, Keyshawn Blackstock, Cole Dellinger, the three signees from the 2023 class. Coach Cap said publicly, those three newcomers have come in at a level higher than any other newcomer so far. Gotcha, wow. At Michigan State. Okay. Stanton Rammel is a future franchise left tackle type in yeah. college. Um, future NFL draft pick frame. Obviously, you have to prove that, but mm -hmm. he has all the tools. Blackstock, he will be starting at one of the two tackle spots this, this upcoming yep. season. Dellinger, probably the center that will take over after Nick Samak. Hopefully, redshirt freshman next year. Yeah, Maybe a year after that. We'll see. Those three guys, high hit rates. Let's backtrack another year before that. Let's do it. 2022. Ashton Lepo, Brandon Miller, the two tackles. Yeah. Both were outside of the top 800, if I'm not mistaken. Brandon Miller was unranked nationally. Those guys, Brandon Miller has come in and he has po probably put himself in that conversation with Stanton Ramble, the next left tackle. Okay. And then you have um, gaining 40 pounds since the day he signed. Ashton Lepo. He could be not bad. he could be the next starting right tackle. So again, it's the, nobody knows who's going to be the next starter. Nobody knows exactly where the pecking order is yet. Not even Cap, not even the players, because every day they're getting better. But nobody's a bust. Mm -hmm. Chris Phillips, Gavin Brocious. Unfortunately, Gavin Brocious hurt his leg. Those two guys were battling squarely for the right guard spot with Geno Vandermark from Cap's 2021 class. Yep. Also in that class, Kevin Wigginton. He's doing what I think he's in the two deep right now. Okay. Every gotcha. single person that Cap has signed for the most part, maybe other than one or two here or there, they are ahead of schedule. So I say all of this in this monologue to say Michigan State is landing guys that even if the recruiting sites are not saying they're highly valued, he is identifying them, he is landing them, he is developing them, and he is keeping them. And Michigan State's depth and for at least a little bit, their starting level is already improving. The long-term potential of, the, of this offensive line room couldn't be in a better spot. Couldn't have said any better. I mean, yeah, that's, that's, that's JT <laughs> on the ones and twos right there, man. How come when I gained 40 pounds in my first two years at State, like, <laughs> no one applauded me for it? I was just kind of looked at, like, is he okay? Like, it, do, we, do we need to intervene here? But it's a double standard there. But, yeah, I mean, that's that's awesome. But, yeah, about, like, Lepo and, and Braden Miller, too, is, like, they, they had the frames all along, mm -hmm. and, like, to get the potential out of those frames – you need solid coaching. So, right. yeah, I mean, it's just uh, a joy that Coach Cap is still, you know, at Michigan State because we know yeah. that programs have tried to pry him away. And it's that. It's getting the potential out of your guys early on, but also just the continuity of, you know, knowing that this coach right. will be here is, is that those two things Huge. go hand in hand with solid positional recruiting. Yeah. So we're, and we're seeing it pay off in spades right yeah. now. I talked to the parents of two 2025 offensive line recruits here in the last few months. Um, they're early in the process. They don't know a lot about yeah. Michigan State. They don't know a lot about Coach Kep. The first thing they said is he turned down USC and Georgia. That tells me he's going to be here for a while. See. Can't wait to visit. And that's it. Bang. That's all. You, there that's, we go. That gets you in the door. That piques the kid's interest. It's proof in the pudding right so, there. So, great point there by you. That's definitely. Great points by you. We're, we're having a great points <laughs> off right now. We're just playing great point tennis over here. Look at us go. Nice. Do you have any other great points about uh, recruiting by any chance? 
Let's do a recruiting roundup. Okay. Let's wow. go ahead and move to Look that segment that. of the show. Wow, I just guessed. Yeah. Oh, thank God I was right. I yeah. Was, oh it's goodness. not like we have a show sheet. We have a show sheet? We have a show. Oh, oh my God. Oh. Wow. We've done a great job just winging it. I've been doing a crossword puzzle yeah. over here the entire time. <laughs> okay. All right. Go get him, champ. So, um, Cap, as we have already been talking about. Yeah. 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 A lot of guys um, that he's gotten already, past classes, yeah. the current class. Sure. He has also gotten a lot of kids to visit. Early in the class, obviously, not not many of them have committed, only Andrew Dennis so far. But if you look at kind of the reporting that we're doing in the industry of who's visiting uh, in the spring, who has visited, um, basically the biggest takeaway is the offensive line, which makes sense. It's usually the biggest component of a class. But that is the group that is visiting in waves right now. Um, there's quite a few guys. Mike Williams uh, from Baltimore. He's a kid that uh, Michigan State got on really early. Now he is blowing up. You have another offensive tackle, I believe also from Baltimore, um, at, at the very least from the East Coast, Logan Bennett. Mm-hmm. I believe he is still unranked, and I don't think too many schools have gotten on there yet. He's a kid that's going to be blowing up. If he goes on a camp circuit all across the country, um, those offers will start rolling in this summer. Um, he's 6'5", 6'6", maybe, 3'10". He can play guard, probably will play guard if he chooses Michigan State, maybe tackle for some schools. But he's a guy that we're watching um, just closely because Cap has gotten there first. So if Michigan State can reel him in soon, um, that would be nice. Um, if not, you'll get to see him blow up and, and maybe a heated battle there. But um, just, again, the theme, offensive line visitors, uh, big thing, big thing here in the spring.